It's been more than a year since the Taliban took power in Afghanistan following the U.S. withdrawal from the country. Since then, more than two dozen resistance groups have formed across the country, including the National Resistance Front of Afghanistan. Ali Nazari is the head of foreign relations for that organization. Ali, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. So first, tell us what it's like living under Taliban rule in Afghanistan right now. Uh, currently, uh, living under Taliban rule is the worst thing that could happen for a human being. Um, Afghanistan right now has been hijacked by a terrorist group. Once again, after 20 years, it has become a safe haven for international and regional terrorist groups. There's 21 terrorist groups living inside that country. Women are being erased from public life at the moment as we speak. Uh, just a few days ago, they were banned from visiting parks and, and public baths, for example. And, and at the same time, we have a, a plethora of crises, political crisis, economic crisis, humanitarian crisis, security crisis. So it's much different than what existed before uh, August 15th, 2021. So explain the National Resistance Front. Uh, what is it? What's, what's the end goal? The National Resistance Front was created just as the Republic of Afghanistan collapsed on August 15th, 2021, led by uh, uh, Commander Ahmad Massoud, uh, who um, stayed in the country and chose not to leave. And the remnants of Afghanistan's army, special forces, who were trained, funded, and advised by the United States and other NATO countries, they stayed on to continue their fight against terrorism and for democracy. So the whole narrative that the people of Afghanistan do not want to fight for democracy, do not want to uh, um, fight against terrorism is false. After August 15th, the National Resistance Front has been struggling to reestablish democracy in Afghanistan, a pluralistic democracy where every single citizen enjoys equal rights, regardless of their race, religion, and gender. And at the same time, our struggle is against terrorism. We believe we're the last remaining anti-terrorist force is continue, continuing the global war on terror. It's not a civil war. When we're fighting 21 terrorist groups from around the globe, we cannot characterize this as a civil war, but it's the continuation of the global war on terror. How large is the organization and how are you fighting the Taliban? So right now we're in the thousands. Um, last year at this time, we were only in two provinces. This year we're present in 12 provinces. Uh, we are fighting an unconventional war because of the limitations that we have when it comes to our resources. Yet in the past seven months, we've had a very successful fighting season. Uh, we've been able to achieve so much. Um, just uh, a month ago, we were able to liberate a district hundreds of kilometers away from our center, which is Pancha province. We were able to keep the province for around 24 hours and then our forces withdrew because that's not our aim to sustain control over the districts and provinces right now. At the moment, uh, we are highly successful. We're made up of highly trained forces who have been fighting the Taliban and other terrorist groups for the past 20 years. What has been the response to your group from American officials? So at the moment, um, unfortunately, um, we are not receiving any help, assistance by anyone. So when we started on August 15th, we were completely ignored by all countries. And this has been the case for the past year. Um, and as the last remaining democratic forces fighting terrorism, um, it is unfortunate to see the international community ignoring the a struggle for freedom and democracy that the people of Afghanistan has right now. What's, what's your group's strategy right now? You said it was not to hold territory or control territory. Then, then how are you going to win against the Taliban? Well, what we've been able to achieve within a year was very difficult for the Taliban to achieve in 15 years. So we've been very successful in, in the strategy that we are pursuing. Uh, we were able to liberate a district, Yet, in order for us to start liberating the country and sustaining control over whole provinces, we will need the assistance of the international community. This cannot be a job only done by the National Resistance Front. Because once again, as I, um, I mentioned before, we're fighting international terrorist groups, Al-Qaeda, ISIS, 
many other groups that are present inside Afghanistan. So this should not only be an effort by the National Resistance Front. We need the support of the international community to be able to acquire the uh, resources that we need in order to sustain control over those provinces once we liberate them. The Taliban inherited tens of billions of dollars worth of American equipment from the previous regime. How are you going to fight against that, especially without the international support that you're looking for? Well, right now, with the limited amount of resources, we've been able to uh, defeat them um, in every battle in the past year. Um, they've lost um, many of their prominent commanders, uh, many of their officials, um, their casualties have been high. They lost a helicopter and during, um, well, in, in June. And, and, um, and so we see low morale. And, and at the end of the day, resources doesn't matter. Uh, before August 15th, Afghanistan's armed forces were receiving $4 billion worth of uh, military aid on, a, an, on an annual basis. But we saw what happened. So it doesn't matter how, how much resources they have. At the end of the day, it's will, determination, and morale that will determine the victor. And finally, Ali, do you have the support of the Afghan people? Of course. The, how do you know? The people of Afghanistan right now support us. The people of Afghanistan in the past 20 years have w never expressed their, their uh, hatred or opposition to democracy, and they support any group that is fighting for democracy, for their rights, especially in this condition that they're living in, which is hell. Basically, everything has been taken away from them, and as their everyday passes, their lives are becoming much worse. So they need a group to liberate them from this nightmare that they're living in right now. Well, Ali, we certainly wish you the best. Thank we you very much. We don't want uh, the Afghan people to suffer, as you know, but uh, thank you so much for coming and sharing the, the story with us. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any future Government Matters interviews.